Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for taking the time out to be here today. I'm Karan Mulchandani, the founder of a fashion-based social enterprise called Enlightened Sapiens, and I'll be your host for today. So on behalf of the South Asia Bonsai Federation, I'd like to extend a very, very warm welcome to all of you here who have joined us from India, as well as overseas on this very special program designed by SABF and programmed by WBFF International Consultants, where we're going to learn the art of Penjin. This is the second segment in the series. The first one was executed by WBFF International Consultant Kusuma Datta in April. So as you may all may know, SABF has been covering various issues in the field of bonsai. And now, without further ado, let's hear from the president of SABF, Mrs. Sneha Prasad. Good afternoon. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce Mrs. Jyoti Parekh, World Bonsai Friendship Federation International Consultant for South Asia Bonsai Federation. It is indeed a pleasure that today Saab has got the opportunity to, and it stands for an equal in providing equal platform to express, document, organize, and grow the creativity of bonsai. As you all know, we are just three years old organization in this region. And I'm very happy to share with all of you that we have very positive vibes coming across from all the clubs and from all the countries. Saab proposes to establish a huge bonsai trader association, a platform for them, a network for them amongst all the zones. I hope we all will cooperate and we will be able to make one. I have one announcement to make today that South Asia Bonsai Federation is thinking of holding a convention, virtual convention, in March 2022. In your Zoom link, there are two telephone numbers. One telephone number belongs to me and one to our secretary. Kindly contact us on this number if you are interested in registering it for it. Now, more for on the workshop demonstration of today's. Mrs. Parikh, as we all know, is an eminent bonsai master of India. She and her team Bonsai Study Group and Mr. Nikunj Parikh have put up this demo for us. The plant which they have chosen is a plant which can be available in all the South Asia Bonsai Federation countries in all the South Asia region. And the way they have explained in details, I'm sure you all will enjoy. I will not take much of your time, but I would like you to see this program and please see it till the end because it's worth seeing. Thank you. Over to you, Karan. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so like ma'am said, today's program consists of two segments, which will be shown one after the other. In the first segment, uh, you will understand the various penging styles and materials needed and gain in-depth knowledge on this art form. While the second segment will be an actual live demonstration on two methods of creating penging. I hope you all will enjoy it. Um, and as you, many of you have attended our sessions before, now you know that we're going to be playing certain videos um, during the program. 
So if you're viewing this on a mobile or a tablet, uh, due to a Zoom limitation, uh, you might see a video box on the top right corner you know, uh, of your screen. Uh, you can move the panel video uh, from the top right to any of the sites, uh, any of the corners, so that it does not block your view of the program. Uh, also, um, you know, you make sure your speaker volume is on full so that you can hear. Uh, and, even, and for an even better experience, kindly use a headphone or earphone. Uh, so now let's begin with the first segment. Um, just going to play that. Right. So good afternoon, bonsai friends uh, from all over India and the outside world. We are very happy uh, to be here with you. And, and I'm especially happy as a WPAF consultant to present this program for every one of you. I'm very thankful to SABF and Bonsai Study Group of the Indo-Japanese Association to present this program as miniature living landscape penging to every one of you. Normally we have meetings with our members on alternate month and we prepare a program. And this time we got the opportunity to show our program to everyone. Now friends, we have been doing uh, and learning and we have learned the bonsai art from Japanese people for all these years. But now the Chinese people are more open and they are also showcasing their art uh, of bonsai and they call it penjing. So we also should understand their way of presenting, their way of making and their philosophy behind it uh, that will make it very interesting for everyone to know. So our today's topic is miniature living landscape penjing. The word penjing is made up of two Chinese words, pen meaning pot and the jing paraphrased as a landscape or scenery. It is the traditional Chinese art of creating landscapes in a tray to exhibit different scenes of nature in a miniature format. The penjing artist seeks a balance between the beauty of nature and the beauty of art. The major source materials are natural trees and the plants which change with seasons. Penjing is thus a living art, just like the bonsai what we make. It is very interesting to know the history behind the penjing art in China. So you can see in this picture uh, that a wall mural depicting a maid servant carrying a penjing with miniature rockeries and the fruit trees. And you can see here in the other picture, the depiction of the Ming uh, Imperial Court. Uh, ladies standing or standing beside the penjing. Here you can see a nice bonsai penjing and here is a potted plant and these ladies are discussing and appreciating the art. The categories of penjing. Penjing generally falls into one of three categories. The first one is tree penjing, shumu penjing. Tree penjing is actually what we call as bonsai. A tree penjing includes plantings in pots, which focuses on depiction of one tree. You can see here in the picture, one old beautiful bonsai. Now, the other type is called landscape penjing, shan shui penjing. Now, these penjings are created in shui pen, shallow trays without drain holes, and based on stones and water features. This type of penjing includes compositions that portray grand and dramatic visions of nature using either rocks alone or rocks with small trees and ground covers as minor elements. You can see here a very beautiful uh, composition of tall rocks and small trees. And it is in a shallow tray and there is water around this mountain. So this is one type of a penjing called landscape penjing and Chinese people are expert in making this and in the large country, they find beautiful stones also. Next. Now third type is called Shui Han penjing. That is water and land penjing. This is a relatively new form which combines the former two 
types of pinching and developed by master zhao quen quan in 1970 so it's a very recent type of a pinching recognized by the world and this form usually portrays a relatively small areas with land form trees are always used in water and land pinching and is a dominant feature along with rocks and other landscape features the design typically also incorporates a water feature which could be a river creek or a shoreline of a lake so here you, this uh, particular shui han penjing is made with the uh, uh, seedlings of christmas trees and it's a very nice shoreline and the temple and all creating a nice scenery so this is a shui han penjing next now material used for all penjings now all three categories that you saw require good uh, selection of plant material choose trees of the correct shape and variety for each composition then popular species are conifers like pines and junipers or broadleaf evergreens like ficuses muraya ilex segrecia carmona microphylla crejurina celtis Bucida spinosa, etc., like many plants with smaller leaves, and some like ficuses with little larger leaves are also used. Now, to bring a touch of color, now some people like to make a colorful composition. They can use the flowering plants like Cerisa, Legostromia miniature varieties, Raitia, or fruiting trees like dwarf pomegranate, Surinam cherry, and Barbados cherry. the main tree should be a miniature one mature one with the thickest trunk the ones should have trunks of varying thicknesses now ensure that the root balls are fairly small so that they can all fit into the tree next now here you can see one shui han penjing with cerisa for cerisoid trees and slate stones this we had tried some years back and um, it did work very well for many years now another example of the uh, penjing shui han penjing that we have tried with nia buxifolia with small pebble like stones now shui han penjing with juniperus chinensis trees and limestones now here the comparative lay the trees are large and uh, with very tiny leaves so you can say it is a far off distance view and limestones are very easily available in india uh, with they are very interesting with a uh, nice uh, texture color and uh, the shape so we they are useful for our compositions now for some bonsai we need containers containers are to penjing artist what paper is to the painter since penjing is considered to be a three three dimensional painting now containers are usually natural stone slabs generally without holes now white marble or granite slabs are used as landscape trays and single tree penjing require appropriate ceramic pots now these can be of varying shapes and sizes like round oval rectangular or of irregular shapes next here in the picture you can see some of the uh, island like marble tray and rectangle tray and some ceramic trays which are used for normal penjing as well as for shui han and landscape penjing now here we had tried some time back in our small marble trays to make the landscape penjing variety the tall mountains and the side mountains and all that so these are all miniature mame creations next 
Now the rocks are important in all penging designs. So the right selection of rock with proper understanding is very important. So let's see the what type of rocks. The rocks can be of soft or hard by nature. Now soft rocks such as sedimentary sandstones are porous enough to allow percolation of water and are easy to cut and shape. However, they are used to a lesser degree by penging artists because they lack the strength needed for longevity and durability. Now many kinds of rocks are suitable for penging as long as the rocks are strong and won't break apart easily. Now you can see here that sometimes we get tempted to use the soft stones or like Ciporex kind of pieces also, but they will not last longer. So we should always depend more on the hard kind of stones and they are available in India like limestones, slate stones, quartz, cobblestone, and even some stand stones are good. Next. Now rock shape, color, and texture. There are many types of hard rock with various shapes, quality, and colors. Select rocks which will suit your theme. So in all the penging creations, we must have to design uh, in your mind or on paper what you are going to do it in your uh, creation. So accordingly, you have to select stones, trees, and all the other accessories. So here it is said that usually one uses rocks which are white, cream, black, gray, brownish red, or a mix of these colors. Green rock is like marble kind, certain green rocks are available, but which are not suitable because they will mix up with our color of the plants. Next. Here you can see the examples of all the stones available with us. Now burnt coke or cinders are freely available, sandstones, lava stones, limestones, or any other stones with rugged or jagged surfaces, jagged surfaces, depressions with lots of character are ideal for penging. Stones with white streaks can create the effect of snow-capped mountains, then uh, stones with white lines running vertically across their surface create the effect of stream or waterfall, like you can see in these stones. So here, this is the sandstone you can find uh, on the coastlines. And these are the limestones, then burnt coke, then these are the chira stones, what is available from Goa. So it is not necessary that what is mentioned here is only suitable. You can find in nature hundreds of varieties of beautiful stones. Maybe if they are suitable for your creation, you can use them. Next. Now complementary or accent plants. Now in nature, when we put the nature in miniature, we use the stones and trees. Now, in nature, in the wild, you will always find the exit plants or the shrubbery or the grasses that grow underneath. Now, accent, they are called accent or complementary plants. Now, exit plants, grasses and moss add natural beauty and greenery to a landscape pinching scene. However, one must ascertain the best place on the tray for each plant to be planted so that their chances of survival are maximized. Now, soft tissue plants, together with the soil attached to the raw, raw, roots, are often planted in cracks in the rocks. Now, these are sometimes the tiny weeds, pilia kind of weeds. They are very useful for at this purpose. And certain succulents are beautiful uh, uh, for the purpose of using uh, between the crevices of the rocks. The plants must be regularly watered to ensure their survival and healthy growth. The moss is important in a penging as it holds the soil together and helps in maintaining the contours of the land. So we have to collect many items before we start work 
on our painting creations. Next. Now here, the examples are given where the grasses, fern, succulents like sedum, mini euphorbias, etc., make good excellent plants for psyche. Now, moss is psyche and also for Sulihan penjing. All kinds of penjing require this kind of accessories. Moss is an important component of penjing. Next. Now, miniature figurines. We Indians are very, very, very uh, fond of miniature figurines. And Chinese people are expert in making these figurines. So miniature figures form a significant part of any landscape painting as they help establish a specific scenery, add an element of naturalness to the theme. Now, they are often included in the landscape to enhance the sense of the perspective and proportion. It is very important to keep the proportion and thus miniature figurines must be selected carefully to maintain that proportion. So let us see the, what kind of figurines are available. You can see in this picture here, all varieties of bridges and all types of tarapa and the boats. Here on the lower side, you can see the animal figures and the birds. And this side, you can see the huts and uh, pagodas, then lanterns, then the human figures uh, sitting on a rock or fishing, or even the people sitting under a tree and playing some games. These kind of figures are also available. And if you use them in right uh, place and position, they really look very interesting. But mind you, don't get carried away by you for using too many of figurines. Otherwise, the attention of the viewer will go on the figurines and it, they will not look at the creation that you have made with stones and these plants. Next. Now, landscape painting. Now, here you can see one example of a landscape painting. Landscape painting is a total mountain scenery. Here you can see the large stone, medium stone, small stones, island stone, all kinds of stones are brought, uh, are brought together, cemented together to create this composition. But mind you, these are not natural always. They are sometimes chiseled, they are uh, made, uh, they are given base, then they are stuck together. But the work is done so neatly and beautifully that they look perfectly matching with each other. So here you can see this particular landscape is so nice that must have got some prize also. Next. Now we tried our hand at making this landscape painting in 2016. So we selected this vertical kind of uh, sand. I mean, slate stones and some premna trees and the oval marble tree. So the penjing is created with vertical slate stones grouped together in two sets. The left one being taller and the more dominant and the seven premna trees are added as accents along with grasses as complementary plants. So this is our emblem attempt at making this creation. And let's see how this side, you can see it is a back side of the creation and you will see the front part of it in the next slide. This is the front of this composition. You can see the stall, two stones are brought very close to each other. And uh, this is a little smaller mountain than this one. The premnas are very uh, suitable because they have smaller leaves and very interesting curves you can give. Here you can see the Shui Han penjing has to have the water element. So here in the front, you can see in the marble is depicting the water, uh, the, maybe a sea or a river meandering through these two compositions going on the backside. And there's a small boat here 
and this is a lens, a lens, I mean, small eyelid. Next. Now, there's another example with uh, just two trees. This is also a majestic tree composed with uh, slow, lower uh, or the smaller uh, the stones. Next. Now, some of the pieces that we made, the styles of water and landscape painting, shoreline style, uh, portrays a forest scene along a shoreline. Here, a rock line, line divides the land and water areas. The trees are planted on the land area with rocks as essence, and small rocks and boats are placed in the water. The rocks along the shoreline should be placed along an uneven line and should be of varying sizes to make it look natural. So here you can see the uh, uh, unusual or a wavy kind of a tray. And these are the black stones, the uh, uh, coal stones that we call, and the juniper uh, plants are there. there. It's a low arrangement with a shoreline. Next. Now in this side is the island style. Features a piece of land surrounded by water on, an, on all sides or a peninsula joined to a pot rim on one side. This is a closer view of the arrangement. And in that kind of arrangement, we can use the plants with little bigger leaves. Here there are three ficuses are used together and small few stones here and the land is covered, soil is covered with the moss and a little grass is making it a perfect composition. And one human figure is also added to it. Now this side, you can see a creek style. This is made with a, a Busida spinosa and large oval tree. Now here two pieces of land are separated by a narrow stretch of water. You can see here, and the two land masses are asymmetrical and support trees and rocks of varying heights. So this is also a nice composition we made and it's doing very well. Next. Now here, the river or a lake style. Now features two pieces of land separated by a broad stretch of water, uh, wider than a creek style. The two land, land areas support trees arranged in the forest style with the land sloping gently towards the water. The boats and the bridges can be uh, placed in water areas. So this is also one Chinese composition and it is worth as a, worth to look at it as an example. It's a nice island kind of tree. Now design or layout of the water and land bench. A tentative layout is very important. Start your composition by tentatively grouping trees, rocks, your trays, complementary plants and figurines. An ideal water and land pinging is created with the trees as the main artistic element and the rocks and other accessories as essence. Now along the trees, one must be dominant in the composition and the other trees must be placed in relation to the main tree. The rocks of different shapes and sizes must be used and the most prominent rock must be placed with the prominent trees. This, there are certain principles you will find same for the psyche and same from all these composition also, where the more importance is given to the main tree and the main rocks, they are normally together and to create the depth and the harmony and the direction, we put the other trees around them. Next. Now, Shui Han Penjing arrangement method. Water and land penjings can be arranged in two ways or methods. In the first method, the rocks that are selected are flattened from the bottom 
and cemented on the tray first and allowed to dry. The plants are then placed in the designed and designated land area along with supporting rocks. In the second method, the plants are first placed in position and the rocks are then placed around the trees. Finally, the shoreline rocks are cemented in place. Now, these are both the methods. Whichever method is suitable to you, you can apply. And when we are going to show you the video of uh, penging making, we will show you both the methods. So let's friends go ahead and see. In 2016, when we were making our book on uh, group plantings, we made this arrangement with uh, Shui Han Penjing, with uh, uh, Baraya, Ebraya, Ebinus, and the Sandstone. So let's see, this Shui Han Penjing has been created with flat limestone rocks and nine Braya Ebinus trees. The rocks are placed such as to create two land masses with a meandering river in between. Miniature figurines lend a sense of perspective and interest to the composition. Here you can see the, uh, the placement. These are the raw material. And here you can see the placement of rocks and the trees. Now in 2021, you can see the same arrangement and see how beautifully the trees have matured in few years. Now beyond the spirit of miniature landscapes, this is the book we made in 2016. We both and the Chan Kejriwal, we all together made this book. And this presentation is mainly the inspiration from this book. Now here the photo credits, Nikunj and Jyoti Parekh, editing Jyoti Nikun Parekh and prepared by Sujata Bhatt. A presentation by the Bonsai Study Group of the Indo-Japanese Association, Mumbai. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this PowerPoint presentation painstakingly prepared by us and Sujata. And our purpose is to teach the basic uh, way of making Chinese way of penjing and their philosophy and guidance behind it. Thank you so much. So that concludes our first segment for today's program. 
uh, we are now going to see a live demonstration uh, on two methods of creating pension. I hope you all enjoy. In our previous uh, presentations about the psyche and group planting and elaborately made the presentation on the uh, PPT. Now today we have taken the similar subject which is very popular now is called Penjing. Now Penjing we learn from Master Zhao of China. He visited uh, Bombay and he taught us how to make it. Now this is not as easy as Psyche that you take a plant, stone and a tray. Here you require a lot of preparations like starting from the tray. Now what the tray we use is a marble tray which is very uh, narrow, shallow and with a very thin border. You can see it can be in rectangle shape like this what we are going to use for demonstration or we have the sample of smaller trees like you can make hexagonal you can make the bean shape you can make a fan shape and many other fancy shapes are used they can be very tiny like this or they can be very large like the one we are using is 3 feet long by 19 inches so 19 to 20 inches wide and this is a used tray and but we are redoing our work on the same tray now you can see that we have attached some legs to the marble tray otherwise it becomes very difficult to pick up the tray and the main thing is we have to prepare the stones now looking at this, uh, we have taken this time the limestones. These are from the quarries from South India or from the Saurashtra coastline. Now what we have to prepare? Now how to prepare the stones? You have to take all assorted sizes of stones like this, but you have to cut them at the base you can see, you have to cut them at the base and see that they stand. Like this stone, it has to stand. Like all these stones are cut from the base and they are standing on their own. That makes it easy for us to join as well as stick them on the marble tree. In Psyche, we use stones and put them loose. We don't stick them to the tree. While in penjing method, Suihan penjing method, we stick all the stones with the cement on the marble tray. So this is more of a permanent arrangement and in Suihan penjing, you arrange the stones in so many different ways, creating the, uh, the meandering river or a stream, you can make the cliff arrangement you can make the ocean, you can make pond, like so many different arrangements you can do, but all should have a water element into it. That the water in the sea, water in the river, water in the stream, or in a pond, all this should, that is why it is called Suihan painting. So land and water painting, and to create the land, we use the stones to mark the area. Now there are two methods. One is that you take the stones and arrange and create your own design like this one. Here we have arranged in two rows these stones and they all are of different sizes and shapes but they all have arranged close to each other and they are standing on a row. After we have decide this arrangement we can take a chalk or a pencil and mark the position of these stones which we have decided the positions so that when we pick up these stones we don't forget them. But mind you, 
you don't pick up all the stones and disrupt your arrangement, we will pick them up one by one. So this is one way. And the second method is that you first arrange the plants, create the landscape and then along the sides you fix the stones. So in that case, now you have you can use the larger plants, nicely developed, nice bonsai you can use and put it in the tray and then put the stones. While in this kind of arrangement, we fix the area and then put the plant. We are now going to show you all the different types of soil mixes. Uh, this is the bottom gravel of marble chips. This is the wet soil mixed for uh, mound making. This is the dry soil and this one is the rice farm soil which is sticky for making a border and making a wall create a wall so that the nutrition field rice uh, soil is used wet or dry and uh, these are the mixes in different proportions we have done and we have to constantly spray uh, and mist it while arranging after cementing the rocks. We also need many other things for making pinging that uh, here you can see uh, in this bowl for sticking the stones we need cement either grey cement or a white cement depending on the colour of the stone then the crushed and powdered uh, stone the same stone you have to powder so that joints we can hide is the water is needed for cleaning here are all the plants Mamba, ma, we Indeed. formerly we were calling it Mamba Buxifolia. Now we are calling Severin, Severina Buxifolia. And you can see they are all of all different sizes, starting from almost like a bonsai, large one we need. Uh, this is the second size, then medium size, and the small size. Now this is a, a totally a scenery where we can show some colorful plants like uh, this euphorbia then alternanthera variety then some ground cover with tiny leaves hemigraphies then all these kind of colorful little uh, plants also can be used by the side of this arrangement underneath we can also make it very interesting by using the moss on the ground if you don't have then you can use the sphagnum moss and cover the soil because we need to cover as the quantity of soil is less and the moisture should remain for throughout the day and, wash, and the soil should not wash out. So this is the purpose of using sphagnum moss and the green moss. Green moss at times turns brown. The season wise it turns brown. In that case you don't remove this uh, moss but it will revive uh, in the right season. So now is that after the spring in the summer we have noticed that the soil with, uh, which was having this moss has started reviving. So this is what we need for making the penjing. Now the soil mixture that we are using is the same that we use for making bonsai. We require tools also, so friends you need to collect very basic few tools like a pellet knife which is flexible for applying cement. If you don't have then take the, uh, you know, the knife which we can use it for, uh, we can pick up and apply cement like this. We need few small large brushes for cleaning the area in the cement, we need a piece of sponge, then little uh, spade for compacting the soil and also a broom. So these are the basic thing, of course our bonsai tools are needed for framing the plants, 
it is scissors and concave cutter all that is needed so this kind of preparations you have to make in advance so that you can complete your arrangement in one day friends you already saw the arrangement of stones which is a uh, like a river meandering river and uh, stones are in position now the, they are marked with the chalk as i told you before and now it's time to stick them we have prepared the cement mixture with water it is half white cement and half grey cement you can take any combination or you can take any just one type of cement and mix it and you have to use this kind of knife or a pellet knife so without disturbing the position we pick up the stone just like this hold it from the top and <clears throat> just like this and then apply this cement little more like this and put it in the position and press so that little cement will come out on the side and air bubble will go out of it then pick up the next one now in this kind of arrangement we have to see that all the stones are touching each other why because this blank area is going to have mud our bonsai soil and plants so they should not come into the water area so the little bit more in the middle and then less on the side and then put it in the position and stick so this three stones are done then i take this one and in the center you have to put little more material and press it so that it spreads out perfectly so when you are learning bonsai uh, you have to be a carpenter you have to be a mason you have to do all kinds of work yourself to create the beauty in bonsai so when you are pressing and some of the cement comes out don't panic we are going to show you how to clean the excess cement that is coming out these are lime stones with lots of uh, uh, you know cavities and grooves and uneven surface so even after cutting there are lots of gaps which we have to fill up with this cement so all stones are very steady
there is one stone in the middle of the waterway which is like an island so i'm sitting down the island stone Now this is actually the inside part of the arrangement and here is going to be the soil. So this area is not going to be visible where we can add more cement in the joints and make these stones more fixed. Let me start from here, back side. that is the inner side put more cement and make it nice and smooth and it's going to get covered with mud consistency is very good it is not very thin nor very thick so it is holding on to the stones very well and little bit of the moisture is getting absorbed by the stone now suppose your mixture is little loose then by your side you keep little dry cement and uh, you can sprinkle little bit so it gets its water gets absorbed and your stone becomes steady keep this bowl with water so you can wash off your hands just first now cleaning the back side making it proper with the help of the sponge and water squeeze out water from the sponge and just apply it and make it neat and clean yeah the front side you put cement uh, all through and the joints also but the quantity you take is less and shouldn't spread too much uh, on the sides Take a thin brush like this. With a thin brush like this, make cement nice and smooth, and remove any extra uh, one which is surrounding the stone. And then take this sponge, squeeze the water, and wipe.
sponge works very well to remove all the stain of cement from the marble. See how nicely it comes up. All the extra cement is gone. Even from here. So you can show the shore line of the stone neat and clean. At the same time, it doesn't come up. The stone remains steady from both sides. This is this powdered stone. These are little bigger pieces and this is very fine powder. So to hide this cement in the front area, we can take it and apply it little more than needed on the cemented part. You have to do this when the cement is still wet because of the stone shape little more uh, cement was used. Now it is getting covered with the chuda powder. This is the uh, wet uh, dry, spill soil. dry spill soil and we have to make a border first. So that when we are using mud will not come out on the edge or it will come out less. Now uh, you can all see that the border of sticky soil is made and then the gravels are spread and then over it we make a thin layer of our bonsai soil slightly moistened. In Japan when we learned they used to call it Keto Tsuchi and whenever we asked them the meaning they would not give the meaning. Then I had a dictionary and I found from that that keto means rice field soil, suchi is soil. And that's how we could get it in India also. After the soil is spread, we can use Puradin, systemic insecticide, sprinkle all over on the soil.
Severina Baxi Folia plant. This is a fairly mature plant and uh, you can see it has lots of branches and very healthy plant with uh, new leaves, little bronze in color and there are some flowers also. This plant flowers all the time which turns into a green berry and then turns gradually into black color and when it falls down into the soil it germinates so if you like you can uh, grow your plant from the seeds or sometimes it grows on its own around the, the root ball also and but it's a slow growing plant and it belongs to the lupacin and it's a lemon family and if you crush the leaves and uh, see you get the smell of a lemon and so there are certain problems related to the lemon family also occurs in this plant but not so badly nice smell and it has uh, tiny spines all, all throughout now you can see this branch all throughout there are tiny spines along with the leaves leaves are alternate and very closely growing to each other but in between are the deadly spines so if you are pruning and giving shape it's fine but if you want to wire this plant then you please remove all the tiny thorns and then do the wiring otherwise nowhere there is no space to hold also This plant you can develop from seed as I told you. At the same time, you can grow cuttings this uh, this size thickness. This size thickness cutting also take roots. And you can even if you want a thicker branch, then you can layer and dividing method you can use in monsoon. So it's a fairly easy plant, but the growth is very slow. So slowly, slowly it fills up the plant and makes a good bonsai. As the growth is very compact, you really don't have to look at all the nodes, where to cut and how to cut. You can easily trim it. This plant likes humidity at the same time the warmth of the air atmosphere and so at times it attracts the butterflies in the season and they lay eggs and also another problem is the leaf miner. On the new leaves the leaf miner comes and uh, spoils the leaves. So you can cut off those spoiled leaves. You can see the flow of the tree is leaning towards this. So, as is normal, when the river or stream is there, the tree leans towards the water as the water gives sunlight reflection and the tree will lean more and more towards the water for growing healthy. So, we are going to arrange it. Can you turn around and show? main rock is here and we thought uh, better to put the main tree also nearby with a leaning towards the stream. The main part of the tree is leaning and it is growing with the reflection coming over of the sunlight in the water. So that branch will be powerful and this is the minor part and here we can match it up with a smaller tree.
valencias in this plant because this side is empty. that are the Severinian plants, we have arranged six of them. One large, then this medium, then two still smaller and one more smaller plant is there. And it is, you can see from the front, they all are in different position, different line, but many of them are bending towards the blank space of the water area, that is the meandering river. Now you can have a look at it properly, then we will arrange some more plants. As this is a larger tray, we are going to need 9 plants at least. So we have arranged 9 plants and now there are many pockets near the stone on the back side here. Uh, which are looking blank space just now but we have to fill them up with some more stones and the filler plants so let us see one by one and uh, we will do that And this is Altanenthera, beautiful color, uh, pink and green and cream color combination. Here is one Euphorbia with pink flowers. We we'll take it on the opposite side, jutting off between the two stones. Here is the red Euphorbia, a miniature variety. We can put it here. This is also a variety of alternate You can put little, little stones in between supporting the plant as well as the uh, feeders. After the basic placement, we have to now completely fill the arrangement with soil and make compact with it.
e lì per artisti. We have, we have, you can see, we have used slightly damp soil so that uh, it remains uh, in the position around the roots on the higher levels and doesn't slip down like the dry ones. So easy to cover the roots. Basic arrangement with plants and filler is done and the soil is being compact. Now the finishing part, we have to do it like a makeup with uh, whatever little moss, green moss that we have. We put this lovely moss only in the front side and then on the back side, we are going to take this sphagnum moss, make it thin like this layer, it's a wet, and then put it here and press it. Keep on pressing this sphagnum moss to the soil and don't make a very thick layer. Just a thin layer to hold the soil. To keep this moss in place, now we, we after everything is done, we'll put the hook of wire pieces. These are the thin wire pieces about one and a half inch long and you hold like this and make a pin. <coughs> like ladies put pin in their buns but now their people don't have much of buns left. So everywhere uh, we have to put these hooks, pins so that the moss will not come down. Soil will remain properly in place and the whole arrangement will look neat. I have sometimes noticed that even on the sphagnum moss, the green moss starts growing. So if it is compact, it will have a green moss covering on it. Friends, you can see that uh, this whole arrangement penjing is ready with the help of Nina, <laughs> Sujata and we both work together. Uh, Jaiwant also assisted us to create such a large arrangement and uh, hopefully it grows well and uh, as you saw the uh, yellow Braya arrangement in four years, it has grown very well. Hopefully this also grows. And uh, to show more finishing to this, and this is a Chinese kind of a arrangement called Suiman Penji. We can use a Chinese type of a bridge. So here we have kept these uh, two stones which can balance this bridge. I hope it is proper from that side. And here is the boat, so we can put it. Uh, no, did you notice one thing that this is a river area which is I mean, in the front part it is wide open and then it becomes narrow on the back side it is still narrow. So it shows the length of the river going further.
and uh, when you closely observe all the stones are making beautiful uh, shore line in very natural look so thank you friends for watching this um, arrangement of penji and this is the type where we used and we fix stones first and then arrange the plants now we are going to show you one more arrangement where we are going to put plants first and stones later so see you for the next video Now you already observed and saw the uh, large painting making, Suihan painting, and but everybody doesn't have space in cities to keep such large pieces and maintain them. So we thought of showing you one sm smaller uh, painting, and uh, where we will use a second method of using uh, or arranging the plants first and then we will fit into the rock and stick them. Here we have selected this time uh, the Bucida spinosa. They are already trained into a slanting style or little more than slanting style it is. And there are smaller uh, plants are there. They are already wired. And out of this we choose three of them and arrange into this marble oval tray. In the, in the first video, we showed you different uh, shape, um, you know, the trays. This is oval and it's a nice uh, tray. So, and we have these stones. Uh, they are more of lava kind. We, I, we don't know exactly what type it is, but they look like that. They are medium heavy and they have very good texture, color, natural and the grooves are there. So this we will be using after placement of the plants. We need to uh, treat this Bucida spinosa which has a tendency of giving out little sprouts on the trunk line and which hides the branching position. So we are removing from the from the trunk line whatever obstructions are there so that now the front line is clear and you can put the wire and bend it as it needs. One advantage of Bucida spinosa is uh, that the growth is so compact that anywhere you cut it still looks beautiful. Now we will take out this line. Yours in the front. The plant is arrangement is facing the camera, and you can see this is already wired, and uh, the branches are in proper place, and we will keep it here. But I feel. It needs to be on a little bit higher. It needs height, so we put little bit of bottom soil first, and and then this. I 
I'm sprinkling a little bit of uh, systemic insecticide and raising the plant so that it gets the nice flow going down towards the water. Now I'm turning it to see the position of the plant. Do we need to go a little higher? I think we will we'll go like this. Huh? So put more so. The best way is to put more soil and then do like this to make it steady so there are no air gaps between the root ball and the soil. As usual, we have to use three plants, any odd number of plants we have to take and they all should be of the same variety. Fillers can be of different colorful plants. should not be hiding the trunk, beautiful trunk line of the main tree at the same time it doesn't have to be in the same you know to balance we can insert a stone underneath but still not in the same direction. So I'll let me turn around and show you the three positions. Now after this arrangement is done, we have to take this soil, make this area clean, and see which stones will look nice and only those stones we have to stick and then do the finishing of the mud. Now see, uh, we feel that this kind of arrangement with stones should hold the soil and it's creating the, you know, 
enter the pond area nicely. So after this is decided, we, if you like, you can mark the position with uh, the chalk or pencil, or you pick up one by one and place in the position. Thank you. Now we have finished doing the mud part and sticking of the stone with cement and the position of plant looks nice. The two small ones and one large one in shape and it is bending towards this little pond created with these stones. 
it's a very nice shoreline and uh, the stones are also very pretty. Here there is a space for figurine to come and the small figures can come here also. Now we have to do the finishing with the sphagnum moss and the green moss. So that concludes our second segment. And wasn't that so informative and beautifully, beautifully taught? Um, I, so. I just want to read out the beautiful uh, comments uh, that you know uh, we're getting in the chat box. Uh, thank you all for those lovely comments. Yes, it was an awesome session, beautifully and patiently explained in detail. Uh, thank you for such a beautiful presentation and explanation, Jyoti Ma'am Nikun, sir. Wonderful session, amazing arrangement, super design, amazing presentations. You can see. Um, the comments uh, speak for themselves. And yes, it, it was very inspiring, inspiring uh, very, very informative um, uh, uh, indeed. So, so uh, yes, at this point, I'd like to thank, uh, of course, on behalf of SABF, everyone who, who made today's session happen. Um, you know, and uh, it, it, it has been, you can see from the comments that it has been uh, well received and, and such positive comments are always, always welcome. So thank you. Uh, all for joining us for this beautiful session. I'm going to share details of SABF like Sneha Ma'am uh, had mentioned at the start. If you'd like to get in touch with uh, SABF, uh, we're going to share the numbers with you all. Uh, so if you'd like to reach out to SABF, you can reach out to the president, Mrs. Sneha Prasad, uh, using her WhatsApp number, or the secretary, uh, uh, Mr. Sudhir Jadav, using his WhatsApp number. You can screenshot this page, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, and it's also on the Zoom link, the registration link. So like she mentioned, we're, they're, they're planning on having a convention in 2022. So if you'd like to reach out to her for that or any other reason, you, you can using the details mentioned. And uh, like we mentioned uh, in our previous sessions, we are in Life and Sapiens and we hold sessions just like today uh, on various topics from art, gardening, hiking, uh, virtual experiences. And we, we basically are passion driven. Uh, we are passionate with what we do and we create uh, and curate sessions just like today. So if you'd like to get in touch with us, uh, we'd be more than happy to speak to you through any of our social media platforms or through my number or email address uh, that is mentioned uh, on the slide here. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to say thank you once again for joining us. Thank you for those beautiful comments. Uh, and, and, and on behalf of SABF, I'd like to see you all very, very soon for our future sessions. Uh, the details will, be, will definitely be, be sent shortly. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Bonsai Study Group. Thank you, Jyoti Ben, Nikun Bhai, for giving us such a beautiful presentation. Thank you.